The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and it's going to be a wild one, folks. Facebook shares disappointing greatly, to put it lightly. You're going to see market cap destruction, I'll get it out, destruction like we've never seen before, folks. And I'm talking about maybe 180 to $200 billion wiped off that company's market cap overnight. It's going to be the biggest single loss in market capitalization in a single day, at least on the open. We'll see how Facebook shares trade on the open. They're bringing down a lot of those companies with them as they suffer on user growth. They lost more than the market thought. Their guidance was weak. Uh, they got a lot of things happening. Almost a perfect storm is as one person put it out there this morning. S&P's right now down 1.4%. You're down 64 points trading at 45.13. NASDAQ 100 down 2.7%. You're trading at 14,700 down 413 points. Dow off only 4 tenths percent. Dow Dow, trading down 137. The Russell right now off 1.2%. You jump over to crude. Crude trading down 65 pennies on the session technically at 87.59. We did just have a six uh, an 86 handle. Excuse me. Early this morning, crude catching a little bit of a bid over the last few hours. You got the gold contract down about four bucks at 18.05. We jump to notes and bonds. You got the 10 year down. 17 ticks. We got a hike from the Bank of England today. Uh, excuse me, ECB, right? Is it ECB? Yes, ECB. Christine Lagarde. She was out there in the press conference this morning. Uh, and let's jump over to that one real quick as we do it. No, B of E, excuse me. Yeah, I'm getting them confused. B of E hikes rates as four officials vote for a bigger increase. So that is what is hitting some of the markets out there. You got the 10-year down 17 ticks, 127.18. Uh, Lots of action across the board. You get the 30 year down a full point and 18 ticks right now at 154.14. Whether that has to do with growth, whether that has to do with some of these tech companies not performing to where the market may have thought. But let's just jump over to the main event today, folks. And it's going to be Facebook, and you're going to open down. I got to do, I mean, these numbers, folks, $80 almost. You're going to open down $80 dollars on Facebook shares and it was basically an instantaneous drop off uh, putting it on a one minute to see the escalation last night we'll zoom in on the action right out of the gate Facebook comes out with their numbers at about 402 you drop to a price point of 264 by 410 last night and from there you've just kind of been chopping around and you're pushing overnight lows right now at 247.70 when you look at some of these online subscriber Based growth companies. You look where we are. We jump over to Pinterest, for example. Pinterest is going to get punished on the open as well. You're going to open down more than 10% on Pinterest shares. You jump over to Snapchat. They are getting punished as well from 32 to 26. Uh, many companies can't escape if you're a growth company. Amazon shares down from 3,000 to 2877. Apple, not quite the hit. You're still down $1.80, though, in that company. Remember, Apple's got 16 billion shares. Being down uh, $1.50 on that company is going to be $24 billion hit to the market cap. Microsoft shares down about $4. This is going to be quite an interesting open in about 20 minutes, folks. And let's get into the data on Facebook because, boy... It was quite a miss across the board. So Meta is as they like to be called these days. Meta shares collapse after TikTok steals users from Facebook. That's the Bloomberg headline out there. Whoever's stealing them, folks, they ain't gaining users. And that's the first time in a while. Meta's social networks battle video platforms for users' time. Quarterly loss. This is 90 days, folks. You're talking about $3.3 billion for the metaverse investment totals for a quarterly loss of more than $3 billion. Uh, as they say, you're going to open down more than 20%. We're pushing overnight lows in Facebook, wiping out about $200 billion from its market cap value. Disappointing sales forecast for the current period. 
Uh, we got a lot of data to go over here. The Dow Outlook installed user momentum is a dramatic turnaround for a company that has posted share gains in every year but one since its 2012 IPO. Remarkable, they've been public for 10 years right now. Seems like it's been a one-way shot to higher prices over that time. Meta's rival TikTok Reels is growing quickly, but monetization has been slow, and he asked investors for patience as the product ramped up. Ramps up. This one's a tough one for me to figure out here. TikTok, we have uh, a teenager in my household, 15 years old. TikTok's the deal, folks. Um, I know that some kids in high school, they like Instagram. Uh, but Facebook's not the deal. It's not even close. That's why they're changing the name. Facebook is hip with old people. Sorry to break it to you folks, but that's the deal. I'm in that category, unfortunately, too. Uh, I am not hip with Facebook, but they are not getting the young viewers. Zuckerberg knows that. He's trying to do kind of an about face of where they're going. Over time, we think there is a potential for a tremendous amount of overall engagement growth with Reels. He said on the conference call, we think it's definitely the right thing to lean into this and push as hard to grow Reels as quickly as possible and not hold on the brakes at all, even though it may create some near-term slower growth than we would have wanted. That's a scary sentiment, folks, because basically they're saying we're trying to grow areas that we see our future in, but we're not growing them yet. They're basically saying Reels is the future. We have to focus on it because Facebook, political posts and the garbage that fills Facebook mostly is not the future. He's probably right in that, but that doesn't mean that you can just turn that on and grow it. All right. The kids are not coming back to Facebook, folks. It is not happening. Uh, you get into it even more. Yeah, so here we go. The company changed its name to Meta last year. This is the first time they come out with earnings since that name change. You have a whole PR battle going on here. You don't tell me that Zuckerberg knew this was coming, all right? Uh, he knew that he had to create a narrative of a future that was much different. Because if it was same old deal and you had this type of an earnings event, they, they might have even been punished even more. You're down to 244 was the low. We're trading at 247 right now. Closed at 323. Meta's Reality Labs division, which includes the company's investments in the metaverse and virtual reality, that was the $3.3 billion loss for just the 90-day period. Now, here's a kicker. When on the call, Zuckerberg was asked when parts of the metaverse will, be got, will begin to arrive for users. And his answer was, it's already here, folks. If it's already here, folks, that's not the answer, all right? He replied that some aspects, like digital avatars, are already here. Don't buy it. Not happening. OK, they need to make substantial improvements to their technology, to the metaverse, to the experience before that pays any type of a dividend. He also reminded analysts, analysts that while the metaverse will be the best experienced using a virtual or augmented reality headset, people will still be able to access the digital environment through Meta's existing apps like Facebook and Instagram. Again, not happening, okay? He is trying to tell you folks that Facebook is gonna be the metaverse. That is not the deal. That is not what excited me. That is not why I've been talking about metaverse when I got the Oculus Quest 2. Not happening. A digital avatar, folks, not happening at all. They've had digital avatars forever. Uh, 2.91 billion monthly users in the fourth quarter, flat, compared to the prior period. You don't have to be a charting genius to see the stall out in growth. Even since 2018, folks, it's remarkable to see that since 2017, Facebook has added almost a billion users in the last five years. They ain't adding any more users, folks. It's not happening. Okay, North America, they're losing users. They lost the full users in North America. Revenue, 27 to 29 billion, as opposed to 30 billion. We're going to be coming back. We'll be talking to Kevin Hinks. We're going to talk a little bit more about Facebook as well. Stay tuned, folks. Be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps, negative 62 points right now. NASDAQ, 100, negative 40X. Uh, great point by uh, Dudette in the den talking about NASDAQ 100, folks. Just going to point it out because I love those Fibonacci's. You trade up about 1,500 points from last Friday. We pull back. And we are right at that 3A2 right now. So we'll see how we do on the open Facebook shares. You're talking about almost $200 billion wipeout wipe in their market cap. Going to be an interesting open, to say the least. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network on Fast Market, talking about markets, breaking down the day's market action, talking about earnings. Oh, boy, Kevin Hinks, where do we start today, man? Good morning. Yeah, in, in, in the famous... Th Th this one may hurt a bit in terms <laughs> of trading Facebook and trading any of the social uh, media names, frankly, today. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. Facebook came out with their numbers, and make no mistake, let's put it in perspective, they still made a boatload of money, and they have a boatload of revenue, but they guided a little weak, right? 3 to 11% is not what the street was looking for. Mark Zuckerberg acknowledged that TikTok is affecting their business. They're putting a lot more attention into their reels and their short uh, little stories like TikTok does, but that's less profitable. And so this, you know, I think in many ways, Facebook is still uh, getting, you know, coming through the Apple iOS changes. And, but here's the thing. If you are a fan of Facebook or someone that wants to invest in Facebook, you're getting this back to August of 2020 levels. And this PE, Tommy, when it's all said and done today, is going to be like a 17 or 18. So uh, that's the positive you can take from this. Mark Zuckerberg, though, he didn't make a real attempt to put a pretty picture on it. He basically said, you know, decline in user engagement inflation taking its toll, things like that. So, you know, this is only the third time since they've been a public company that they've missed their bottom line estimates. And will they get it right? Yes, they will. Will it be today or will it not be an ugly day today? It'll absolutely be an ugly day today, Tommy. 
Yeah, as somebody that you know has a small portion of Facebook shares and in, in some retirement action out there, um, the long term may be promising. But how long is that long term going to be, man? Because that 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 the the tidbits coming out last night, um, you know, Facebook Zuckerberg. He wants to change the world kind of with the metaverse and you can't change the world overnight, man. You can't do it without spending some money. Uh, and what are they stuck at now, Kevin? About 2.8 billion users? Well, geez, how how, how, how are you going to keep growing when you're pushing half of the world's population on, on your app uh, at a single time? Now, come on, Remarkable Tommy, let's be honest. It's only 36% of the world is on Facebook. So 7.9 billion, they've got about 2.9 billion. So, yeah about 36 percent one in three a little more than one in three people in the planet is on one of their platforms it is remarkable i was checking out some of those numbers uh definitely a stalled growth but even going back to like 2017 kevin they've added a billion users in the last four or five years and we all know facebook was a household name that almost everybody was using now a lot of that growth probably over that time internationally uh north america actually losing some users which probably has people a little freaked out as that's one of the areas they make a lot of cash on uh but pretty interesting kevin how so many of their competitors get punished too right uh i mean pinterest is going to open down more than 10 percent yep. snapchat's going to open down yeah more than 10 percent 15 percent uh the industry a little bit worried here punishing some of the competitors there like you said you know if you're looking at any of these man snapchat was just trading at 83 less than six months ago you're going to be trading at 26 you got pinterest shares going to open at 24 you were trading at 89 about a year ago uh remarkable the way that that even pulls down everything though we got amazon shares going to open down under 2900 you closed at over 3000 what do you think about the way this is reverberating to some of the competitors let alone what it did to facebook obviously yeah i mean think about this with everything that happened in terms of good news uh yesterday in google alphabet that stock's going to be down 50 bucks or 60 dollars to start the day so great point you know th there there's good news out there you're going to get a chance to buy some dips in some of these names remember what earnings season is tommy it's a big market made up of a bunch of individual stories now facebook story not great today <laughs> but that doesn't mean that google that doesn't mean that amazon after the belt today can't have good numbers and don't get thrown in with a negative down even though some of the some of the you know I, i'm really going to watch google alphabet today it's going to open down how does it finish the day because they have nothing but good news going on there and yet the stock's going to be down today so i'm going to watch that one for sure today so lots to do lots to trade through it's going to be still a fun day but obviously the open not going to be very pretty yeah, and I, I think you make some great points, man. And that was kind of my takeaway, too. Facebook, you can't deny that they obviously have a little bit of headwinds on a few different fronts going on. But some of the other companies, and, and you know, I was just looking at whether it's Pinterest and Snapchat, because they might yep. not be facing the full carnage that you have a company like obviously Facebook and some of the new Apple iOS, right? They talk about that's going to be potentially a $10 billion hit um, for, for the fiscal year alone coming up. But boy, those are strong companies and they might not be facing as much headwind as a company like Facebook. And boy, when you have the the aspirations that Mr. Zuckerberg has about taking over the virtual reality world, it's a dicey scenario when you start losing multiple billions of dollars in that quest in 90 days. Uh, you mentioned Amazon, Kevin. Well, if you wanted to trade some Amazon for earnings, man, you're going to get a haircut on that stock. We're trading at 28.75 right now on the Thinkorswim platform. Now, as of yesterday, Kevin, I got a one day move of about 155 five bucks so just about five percent on that equity coming up for their earnings after the bell tonight i imagine uh you and tom white or the crew who do you got you got alex coffee in there today or tom white what do we got going on it'll for be, fast market back to the old lineup tom alex coffee that was a one-day deal yesterday we were shuffling around some bodies uh but today it'll be tom white and i we're going to go through pinterest look at pinterest nice. And uh, what's going on with that today? And then we'll, like Folio, we'll do a presentation on Amazon. And then we'll look at Ford in the last segment. Nice. The Ford coming out with earnings. So Pinterest, Amazon, and Ford today. Good lineup. Pretty cool, man. This is going to be a wild day, Kevin, because you put it, you, I just, I, I, you're exactly what I'm thinking, man. I can't wait to see. We know Facebook is going to be some tough deals. And folks, if you look at, right, so the, the destruction, I'll get it out of my mind, that Facebook is going to hit. It's going to be the 
probably, depending on how Facebook finishes the day, and we haven't even started trading yet, so we'll see where we go. Uh, but you're talking about $200 billion about market cap, gonna be the biggest one day market cap wipeout ever. Now, the number five on the list I have up there is Facebook again from July of 2018, folks. And boy, when they did that, on July of 2018, oh, I got to back it up even further, Kevin. The point was going to be that they actually had to go even further back, as in they traded down pretty harshly from, I'm going back that day. I got a weekly from about 220 to 175, but the carnage didn't end till the end of 2018 at 123. So we'll see if this is the pullback for Facebook, but quite a pullback. As you put it, you're getting basically prices that you haven't seen in a couple years for Facebook shares. Well, Kevin, August we look forward to the show as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 noon. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, as always, Kevin. Folks, tune in. It's going to be a great one. Boy, you got volatility in spades, man. We got a VIX right now trading at 2370. No, is that right? Yes, it is. 2371. You're up from a close of about 20 last night. Uh, you're going to have some volatility premium in these equities, whether you're selling premium, whether you're buying premium. Snapchat shares going to open at about 26. You're going to have Pinterest. They got earnings after the bell. They're going to be down at about 10%. You were just trading at 31. You're trading at 24. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. I got Facebook up and Facebook down 25%, 24.55. We just made a new pre-market. We beat the pre-market session low. You're trading at lows right now, down 24.7% on Facebook shares right now. Quite the carnage when you look at this company. You're talking about a company with about 3 billion shares outstanding, folks. Getting down to it exactly 2.78 billion to be exact. You're pushing more than $200 billion of market cap destruction. Largest single day market cap disruption, destruction ever. I'll get that word, destruction. Uh, and getting into that real quick. So I talked about it real briefly with Kevin Higgs, but it's important to look at because the last time this happened to Facebook, you got to go back almost four years ago to July of 2018 when they lost $121 billion market cap. They weren't as big of a company at that time. All right. You look at the other companies that have lost that type of market cap in a single day it's the usual lineup you can't lose 200 billion in market cap unless you're a fang stop a stock of some sorts uh apple september of 2020 lost 180 you had microsoft at 178 in march of 2020 that was as the pandemic began to break tesla 140 billion market cap november of 2021 and amazon losing 130 billion market cap so facebook you back it up to july of 2018 all right we jump over to the charts uh, you jump back to a five-year weekly to bring it into fruition. And you just want to be aware of it, folks, because I don't have the daily up there, okay? But that is the week, July of 2018, okay? And it was just the beginning. So pay attention to that, okay? Yes, this could be a buying opportunity, but if you're thinking about getting into Facebook, nothing wrong with scaling because you definitely may see a pullback. The last time this happened, folks, you had an additional 30 plus, no, what if, yeah, 30%. You had an additional 30% after that day of destruction, after the week of destruction, right, to go. You ended that week at 175. Facebook didn't bottom until they were at 123 by the end of the year. Took a solid five months of destruction following that day. We'll see where Facebook goes this, uh, but that is quite a weekly bar off from 384. We're trading at 285. And yeah, you're back to an area. I mean, you break below this area, seems all but natural. You're heading to about 218, an area you had resistance in the beginning of 2020. That's also the area that you fell out of bed in 2018. You're right at that level at 243. Facebook really not finding a bid yet as you're basically just hovering at around session lows. Now, one of the final things I want to look at, I mean, the amount of money that they're losing, right? Another way of illustrating this decline, a 20% decline in Meta, and we're at 25% now, would be more than the market value of 450 companies of the S&P 500. So you're talking about nine out of 10 companies in the S&P 500. If you lose that type of market cap, they just cease to exist. They're gone. All of their market cap is gone. The FANG stocks control it all, folks. Uh, and that's why you're having such a hit across the board on these equities. You are seeing a little bit of a bounce in the NASDAQ 100, but not in Facebook shares. You're at 243. Let's jump over to Google. As Kevin Hicks mentioned, down less than 1% right now for Google shares. There's a little bit of a pop. You're up 35 bucks from the open on Google shares. Let's see how Amazon is trading. Amazon still down 5%, but you just popped about $50 from the lows that you made on the open. Traded down to 2808. You're trading at 2863. As we mentioned, we got Pinterest after the bell as well. Pinterest down 11% at 2450. They're going to be talking Ford coming up on fast market at noon Eastern time as well. Ford trading at 2034. I don't think. Do they have their earnings? They do. They got their earnings as well. So that'll be an interesting discussion coming up on Fast Market, Ford, Pinterest, and Amazon, all with their numbers. Look forward to that program as always. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on. We got a lot going on, folks. Uh, weekly jobless claims. 238,000, fewer than expected. A lot going on in this market. This is one of the last data points the market's paying attention to today. But they were looking for 245,000, so decent numbers. Four-week basis, lowest level since 1973. That's a good indicator for the economy. Tomorrow, we get non-farm payrolls, folks. And all I'll say is be ready for negative action, but be ready for the market to basically say we knew this was coming, okay? Okay. Um, Quite the spike in Omicron. I've been talking about it this week. My family had a COVID outbreak. The work-life balance when your family has a COVID outbreak, folks, it has to take a hit. Uh, the survey week that this non-farm payroll data is going to come from was basically, I think it was the week of January 12th to somewhere around there. It was the peak of Omicron, okay? You don't get the full month of action. You basically get a survey in the middle of the month. And if you get a survey in the middle of the month, that survey took place at peak Omicron covid now, 
the way that those numbers work, for those that are unaware, and you already have the administration out there, uh, Mr. Marty Walsh, Labor Secretary, right, underplaying those numbers. Pay attention to that, okay? Uh, but rightfully so, he's out there saying, listen, if you're in a job and you don't have paid time leave and you need to be out for three, four, five days, something like that, even just for a quarantine for your family, you don't count them as an employee, okay? That's going to happen. That is going to happen many times. Unfortunately, many people that work full time do not have paid time leave just to take time off for five, seven, ten days, whatever it is, three days. Doesn't happen. It's going to be a tough number tomorrow. Very real chance that it's negative. Also, a very real chance, though, that the market says we knew this was coming, man. We just had, you know, 800,000 cases a day, whatever it is. It's so high I can't keep track right now, folks. Thankfully, it looks like we've come over that hump. And we are on the other side of that wave, and hopefully that's the last one. But weekly jobless claims, you're talking about 238,000. Bank of England, as I talked about, they hike rates as four officials vote for a bigger increase. Key rate hits 0.5%, the threshold to stop guilt reinvestments. Policymakers are concerned inflation may top 7% this year. Yeah, they better be. Uh, Christine Lagarde was out there with the press conference, listening to a little bit of that before I jumped on the call. And yeah, she was saying, listen, the, the impact of this virus is not as substantial as it used to be. She was also blaming energy costs for a large, substantial nature of the inflation they were facing, saying it was half of the inflation. Yes, energy costs are substantial, but we got a lot of inflation well beyond talking about energy costs uh, in a big way. So nonetheless, that comes this morning as well. Uh, talking about other companies with their earnings, Merck expects to sell five to six billion dollars of its new COVID treatment pill in 2022. They delivered 1.4, I think, yeah, 1.4 million courses to the U.S. after the FDA approved that. You get into it, a buck 80 versus a buck 53 revenue, 13.52 versus 13.16, 3.82 billion dollar profit in the fourth quarter from 2.6.2 billion in the same quarter in 2020. You jump over to Merck shares, MRK, and you're lower by about 2.2%, but you get the market down 1.3% right now as well. NASDAQ clawing back some of those gains I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Uh, thanks to Maria in the den. You always gotta keep your eye on those Fibonacci numbers, folks. Right at the 382 from the full run we had last Friday, you trade up almost 15, no more than, yeah. Set 430, 1,430 points, excuse me. Uh, more than a 10% rise up. We trade right back to the 382. Uh, at least the great thing about doing these types of trades, folks, where you're trading off areas of support or resistance that you like, that you've set out, it's always nice when they match up to other areas on the chart. We got a bounce last uh, on Tuesday at that area as well. At least you know if you're right or you're wrong, folks. You set the trade, you give yourself a stop, you catch a bounce, you're in it. You get the NASDAQ 100 trading down 330 points right now, but you just got a pop to the tune of about 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 since we've been open. Uh, let's jump back. Facebook shares accelerating lower. There you go, folks. Uh, yeah, some of, some of the competitors may be clawing it back. There you go. Pinterest clawing it back. Google positive. Pay attention to that, folks. Some of this carnage. Facebook's in trouble. Not so sure all their competitors are in as much trouble. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the NASDAQ 100 down right now 2.25%, but catching a pop. We're up 100 points from where we were at the open. You jump over to Facebook shares, basically pushing at lows, folks. You are down 25.7%. You're down 83 bucks per share from 323 last night. And like I said, the last time this happened, folks, it took five months and it took an additional 30% after that carnage ensued. We're going to see the biggest one day market cap wipeout, wipeout ever in the history of markets. Remarkable. Uh, jumping over to some of the stocks that we have earnings on tonight, right? All of them catching a little bit of a bid off the lows, at least. Pinterest down only 8% right now. You just caught a bid by about a buck 30 off the lows that we made on the open. You jump over to Amazon shares, still down 5%. They're going to be coming out with their numbers after the bell tonight. We jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a $200 move priced into their earnings. That's quite a move, folks. When you're talking about selling premium, if you don't know how to sell premium in the options market, folks, check out the program Fast Market at 12 noon Eastern time. They do an outstanding job. They walk you through the trades. Um, and you're going to see some action today. And it's always nice when you get that type of volatility premium if you're the one thinking about selling it. Now, here's what I'll say about that. If you're the one thinking about buying it, folks, you better be aware of the type of moves you need to have when you're talking about paying a $200 move priced in in either direction okay so if you're buying an at the money call you're paying about a hundred bucks if you're buying an at the money put you're paying about a hundred bucks that's for exposure through the today or tomorrow right there'll be a little bit larger move price through tomorrow that's a one day move price through today but you get the point even buying an at the money put or call you got to make a hundred dollars up just to cover your cost that is some volatility premium in a big way priced into that equity all right what else we got going on we got productivity in the fourth quarter of 2021 6.6 percent .6 in the fourth quarter follows a slump in the prior period unit labor cost growth pulls back after the third quarter surge Fourth quarter, non-farm business employee output per an hour increased at a 6.6 .6 annual rate from the previous three months. Largest advance since the second quarter of 2020. Uh, that was from the Labor Department this morning. In the third quarter, productivity slumped 5%. The largest such drop since 1981. I mean, we can just preface almost all statistics, statistics we're getting on largest ever since forever almost. With the help of widespread vaccinations, another massive wave of government stimulus, the economy grew last year with the strongest pace since 1980s, despite persistent supply constraints. Constraints In the fourth quarter, economic outbook, output, I'll get there, folks. In the fourth quarter, economic output accelerated at a 9.2% pace. You get into labor costs, 
or hourly compensation adjusted for productivity rose at 0.3% rate in the fourth quarter following a 9.3% gain in the previous three months. Compared with the fourth quarter of 2020, labor costs rose 3 0.1%. Despite the rapid increases in wages, though, they're still not keeping up with inflation. That's where I wanted to get to, folks. Real average hourly compensation fell an annualized 1.2% from the prior quarter after dropping at a 2.6% pace so something's got to square there folks all right even if inflation's got to pull up pull back wages got to catch up um or the average american is just making less money than they were a year or two ago which is basically what's happening right now especially when you're talking about dealing with the type of rents we're dealing with i've talked about tampa many times you're talking about renting key increases in double digits on a yearly basis, you you do two years of double digit rate increases, folks. You go from paying thirteen hundred a month for an apartment to paying what was that? You had one hundred and thirty bucks, two hundred and sixty bucks over two years. You're talking about fifteen hundred and sixty bucks. That's a three thousand dollar increase in take home pay. That's after taxes. Thirteen hundred dollars a month is a completely reasonable payment that many people are paying or renters. You fast forward now, they're paying fifteen sixty. Over a year, that's $3,000 of take-home pay for a person or a family that was spending $1,300 a month for a rental property. That is a substantial amount of money for somebody renting a property at $1,300 a month to all of a sudden have $3,000 of take-home pay disappear. And that's just for rental prices. That doesn't talk about food prices, energy prices. We can go on and on. You get the point. It is quite a substantial rise across the board. All right, let's see what else we got in terms of what's happening. Jumping down some of the stocks with action today. We got some drug makers. Eli Lilly, they beat by three cents with adjusted earnings of 249. Revenue beat forecast as well, boosted by sales of Trulicity, diabetes drug, and COVID-19 therapies. However, the market is punishing everything right now. LLY is their symbol. Just like that, you got the S&Ps down 67 points again. Eli Lilly trading at 246, but you bounce a bit off the open, and this stock has accelerated just from 235 last week. Honeywell, they're down as well after quarterly revenue missed estimates due to supply chain issues and other factors. Uh, did be the estimates by a penny, adjusted quarterly profit, but revenue, folks, revenue, revenue, revenue is usually one of the most important. You're growing revenue, you'll usually figure out a way to bring it to the bottom line. H-O-N, come on, H-O-N is their symbol? Poof, down 5% and continuing to slide on the open for Honeywell. Biogen, they're lower as well. It's lower across the board right now, folks. Uh, lower than expected, 2022 adjusted earnings. They expect their seals of the Alzheimer's drug to be minimal following the government's move to limit Medicare coverage of the drug. Quite a controversy, quite a deal going on here in a big way. Uh, Biogen, man, you want to talk about some volatility. BIIB is their symbol. They're down 5%. You take a look at this thing on a three-year weekly. That's when the drug gets approved from 292 to 468. And just like that, we're trading at 213. You're right back to the doldrums, folks, of when that drug was thought to be out of rotation permanently. If you remember, March of 2019, they pulled the drug, saying it wasn't working. What happens? October, they say, you know what? We looked at some of the studies. It might work. You trade higher. Vol look at this volatility, right? But guess where you are? You're right back to the market pricing in that that drug basically has no impact on that stock at all. And this is a tough one, though, on humanity-wise, because when you talk about people with such a horrible diagnosis like Alzheimer's, um, you want to have the ability to have hope, to have some type of hope to, to seek care. But there's a big controversy with this drug because it really hasn't shown uh, concrete evidence that it does increase the benefit for patients. It's it, it causes some of the plasma maybe, and I'm not gonna get into it, but either way, uh, right back to basically saying that it's not gonna be covered by Medicare. So as a result, the one problem we have here in this folks is that we're gonna have the FDA approving drugs and then we're gonna have Medicare not allowing for coverage of that. 
I don't know how those two gel together. Usually, you have an approved drug gets covered by Medicare. I mean, you have a federal agency approving a drug for care, and then you have Medicare saying they're not going to cover it because they don't think it's worth it. Those two don't square at all. And the poor people who want the chance to do it, you get that FDA approval, and now they found out that it's not going to be covered, and it costs tens of thousands of dollars. And when Medicare does that, usually private insurers follow suit, and that's what happens. So they've come out and they say, guess what? We're not going to be selling much of this because insurance is not going to cover it. And you're right back to that area, and you're probably going to be stuck there for a while because that's where the stock chopped around without the ability to price in that drug. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps down 66 points. You got the NASDAQ 100 down 391. Dow catching a real slide on the open. The Dow was holding on pretty well. And look at that drop off. Dow just lost 200 points on the open, folks. Nothing getting spared right now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got Facebook. You could call it a little bit of a bounce. I mean, we're trading at levels, folks, that you hadn't traded at all pre-market. Pre-market, you had a low of 244 on Facebook shares. You're settled right now. We're trading at 243. You hit a low of 237. The NASDAQ 100 is down 407 points. This whole market's sliding right now. The S&Ps, you're talking about session lows as we speak right now, down 72 points. And the Dow, out of nowhere, kind of, the Dow was almost flat. Dow now down almost a full percent, down 338 points in the Russell, down 1.1%. 
percent. We jump over to Amazon shares. They have their earnings tonight down 5.7 percent. Pinterest down 8 percent. Snapchat shares down 19.6 percent. And that's just from the close yesterday. Let alone we were just trading at 35. You're trading at 25. There goes $10 just like that in the span of about 48 hours. Uh, not even we'll call it 36 hours, right? No, almost 24 hours. That was the trading yesterday. That was quick. 24 hours, just like that. All right, so yesterday was 2 2 22. It's my son's first birthday. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, but how about this? I saw this one on social media. Just interesting, folks, how things happen sometimes. Desmond Bain, not familiar with him. He's obviously a Memphis Grizzlies NBA player. So he wears number 22. He shot 22.2% from the field yesterday. He had two assists, two blocks, two steals, two fouls, and two turnovers. It's just how that stuff happens sometimes in the universe. It's pretty cool. And speaking of cool things in the universe, folks, uh, let's get a little action for the little man as he turned one yesterday. Tommy the fourth, we'll call him. There he is. Yeah, we still got the tree up. That's right. We love the tree. We had two trees. We had a real tree and we had a fake tree this year. We got rid of the real tree and we had to. We're still milking everything we can out of the fake tree up there. Uh, there's one. It was one year outfit. There's the other one. That little cute man, happiest man alive. And uh, and then what we do? Gave that man a little smash cake for his birthday, a little chocolate cake. Have him uh, have a little fun for his one-year-old birthday. And there he is, folks. Talk about that. There's a little fun for the man trading uh, a little chocolate all over the place. But that's what life's about, folks. So remember that. It's about more than trading. Gotta love it. Happy birthday to my little man yesterday. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Our man Larry's a little under the weather, so we'll have a replay at 11 o'clock, but he's doing okay. He'll be back tomorrow, hopefully. Fast market at 12. That's going to be a great pro program, folks. Pinterest, Ford, and Amazon. Steve Rhodes, live at 1 o'clock. Dave White, live at 2 o'clock. Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. Have a great Thursday, everybody.